for. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve does an outstanding show here every trading day, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to hit newsletters. You'll see it right on the right-hand side, Mastering Probability. You can get one month for $149. Six months for six ninety five, which is a savings of one hundred ninety nine dollars at twenty two percent, and one full year for eleven ninety five, which is a savings of five hundred ninety three dollars at thirty three percent. Now they all come with a thirty day money back guarantee. Okay, Steve has a huge amount of tools that he uses. Once you get the newsletter, you get access to all those tools, folks. So the bottom line, come over, test drive it. If you're going to get it, you know why not do six months a year. 29 days, it doesn't work for you. Just tell us it doesn't work for you, and guess what? You get your money back, and we all move on. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, I'm still getting over that shellacking that your Bruins put on my Red Wings on Saturday night. Oh, I, I, I didn't see that game. I didn't. You, you, they have a, they've got a good team. There, I don't think no, they've they lost. Do, they, they, yeah, no, they definitely they, got a great team, yeah. Yeah, right. and I don't think they've lost this year. And, uh, and tonight they probably put that same shellacking on my Florida Panthers oh, from down here. So, I see. Uh, I, I'll, I'll have to I'll tune in could, tonight. I don't know what yeah, I'm doing Saturday night, but I'll tune in tonight. Yeah, Yeah. This, this, could, this could be a real good year for you out there. At least it's, it's off to a great start. Yes. So I thought what we do is uh, just like the moon and the stock market has its cyclical patterns, and, and that's what I thought we would uh, at least touch on and discuss okay. today. So uh, and we, we've reviewed some of these charts before, but this will give us a feel for exactly where we're at and what to potentially expect. So below here is the 94, what we're looking at right now is the 95 year uh, seasonal chart for the S&P 500. The red vertical lines, folks, that you're, if you're watching us on Tiger TV, you're inside the den. That's where we're at as of today. And you can even see below that, it tells you over those 95 years what an average Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday would do. And then also by the week. And September is obviously the worst, not obviously, but September is the worst performing month for the S&P 500. Now, what this chart tells us is over a 95-year period, on average, the bottom typically forms around October 26th, so uh, last, last week. If we take a look at a 25-year uh, cycle pattern, we can see here that the S&P 500 over a 25-year period of time has typically bottomed in the early part of uh, November, in this case here, October the 9th. If we back it down to 15 years, so we've only got really 15 touch points here, this shows us that the uh, S&P 500 typically bottoms around October 2nd. So there's one thing that we can draw, Tom, from these three charts, and that is that the S&P 500 typically bottoms sometime in October. Whether, um, uh, so whether it's a 15-year time frame that we use, a 25-year time frame, or a 95-year time frame. That's, so that's pretty pertinent. cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's pertinent to certainly today's discussion. And what I want people to get too hung up on is maybe the exact dates where, you know, I, I'll show them out here just so we can understand on average. But it, it sometimes it, it's to the date. But what you want to be aware of is the cycle that you're in, yes. uh, the time period that you're in, and then looking for uh, whatever tools somebody might use, whatever bottom or top that would be forming there. We go take this one step further, and that step further is the fact that we are in a pre-election year. And so we've got data that takes us back. We've got 95 years worth of data. you got to divide that by four. And so we've got 20-some-odd touch points out there, which is a decent amount of touch points out here. And this suggests uh, that a bottom would typically uh, form around October the 26th, so the same as the same 95-year cycle without the presidential. But in this case here, this just shows us with a rally into the early part of November. So it sort of is picking up on your discussion about today's volume being so light that you're not really sold yet. You're, you're sold that we could extend ourselves here, at least for a few days. But this pattern here, we want, so we really want to do pay attention to this, because if all we get is just a couple-day counter trend move, and then we start moving lower, this shows us moving lower into the December time frame. If we take a look at that 25-year period of time, now this only gives us five data points out here, but still, because we took a look at a 25-year chart, here's a 25-year pre-election cycle, and this shows that we would bottom in early October, and then we move higher into about really where we're at right now, and then we form really kind of a sideways type consolidation period okay. between here and the end of the year. So it's 25 years, but it's really only five different data points. So, but but here's the pattern so that people can see that. Now below are the daily charts because uh, we're just focused here on the S&P 500. So I've got the daily chart for the ES Mini, 
the futures contract, the SPY, and the S&P 500. Now, each of these charts show that this is going to complete one of the patterns that I use to help identify tops or bottoms is the TD9 count pattern. And what's going to occur today at the uh, close is we're going to get a confirmed TD9 count, completed TD9 count bottom for all three of these instruments. We're also going to get a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. And that's where price moves lower, it gets stretched. And the way that that gets confirmed is when the bulls arrive, in this case here, they generate bullish reversal candles. So unless the market falls apart in the next 37 minutes, which it could, but unless it falls apart, we're going to get two bottom patterns. Now, doesn't matter whether we have one or two, although I will share with you that the best bottoming pattern for a significant bottom would be that Rhodes Mentum indicator signal. So that's present. If we take a look and, and if the if the equity markets rally, then what price should do from here is they should target this little red, it's red or green line that's on my chart here. It's the red line. That's called the oscillator and change line. Okay. So what we're looking for is the ES mini, and this is gonna I don't use it to the to the point here, to the tick, but the ES mini should rally up to about 4218. The spy, we'd be looking for about 418 and 4199 on the cash S P index out here. And I just took those a snapshot of those charts, Tom, maybe about 10 minutes ago. So those would be good active numbers. Now Adding to the idea of a potential bottom is this tool here that I use. This is the New York Stock Exchange. And the panel, so the, the panel, the panel right below price is the advanced decline line. I take that advanced decline and turn it into an oscillator. It's showing us the difference of that advanced decline line between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average. What's kind of nice is that at tops and bottoms, oftentimes, this will develop divergences. And the divergence here where price moves lower. But yet, if we take a look at the advanced decline oscillator, we're making higher bottoms out there. So the New York Stock Exchange is indicating we should see a bottom. If we take a look at its chart, it's going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count bottom today, and it's going to confirm a Rhodes Mentum indicator signal. Now, its first price target, folks, will be 14,916-ish. Maybe it's going to be 14,920 as price moves up or down. But if price closes above that, that suggests we should see a further rally out there. And uh, um, the other thing that I was looking at earlier was the semis. And I know that semis right now, Tom, the, the semiconductor index is trading above 3173.55. And what I did share with folks on my show this morning is as long as, uh, as, the, uh, as the semiconductor index closes above that at day's end, it's just reconfirming the other charts that we just took a look at to suggest that we really do have a bottom. Now, in the case of the semis, I would expect them to bounce up to about the 3274 level. And if we take a look at each of the cash industry charts out here, we're going to see uh, the Dow's got to confirm Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom signal. The NDX 100 has got that. The Russell's a weak link out here. The transports are going to confirm a buy the D point pattern. So we're getting all kinds of signals out there. And again, that initial price target in the ES is going to be about 42.18 for the NQ around 14.597. It's going to be a bumpy ride because market breadth is still only bullish for its 60 minute time frame out there. And what that tells me is that tonight between 6 and 8 p.m., we should see the market start to pull back a bit. I don't know how far it will pull back at this stage, but I'm looking for a short-term top between 6 and 8 o'clock tonight. It's a great information, Steve. And, you know, particularly, folks, okay, when you're going through that, the first charts with October, hey, we're at the end of October. That's pretty it's, cool. Three separate is. ones, you know what I mean? It, absolutely. Have a absolutely. great one, a safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow, Steve. You bet. Thank Take you. care, Tom. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.